All right, we're on. Hello and welcome to everyone today. Our guest is the guest is XTIC. Well, I've been his guest. Well, now it's time. Now it's time for you to show and to discuss your life stories and everything that comes to MMA. So I'm pretty much grateful that you accepted uh, the invitation. And in general, what can I say about your channel? You know, in the first place, say something about your channel, how everything works, and then we are going to go about MMA discussion. Please go for it. Oh, well, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, Bulgarian cowboy. Um, yeah, so it's an interesting question. My life story. Um, well, I'm not going to go. I'm going to spare you the details with the birth or anything, but to get into MMA, it's just interesting. The Well, I grew up with sports, you know, my whole life, uh, from baseball to soccer, you know, but MMA never really, like, tickled my fancy up until college, you know, because, uh, uh, I don't know, no, nothing really, like, um, understood my, my, um, my intrigue, like, you know, the brutality, but, like, the, the intricacies, you know, like, the violence, the, 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 uh, the complicities, none of it. Um, until like, I really like sat down and started watching it with my, uh, my roommates, you know, at the bars, you know, at, at restaurants and stuff, you know, like, uh, on the Saturday nights and what have you, just like, um, it did, you know, on those, uh, those UFC fight nights. And that's how, you know, I got my start, um, loving, um, the sport that we all know, um, and love. You know, MMA, uh, UFC, and just the other promotions and shit. So UFC is your favorite promotion, or you, you can call yourself an all-around MMA fan? Oh, I would say all-around. Um, Bellator um, comes around in San Jose all the all the time. So, um, yeah, I do, I do go to those events. But, um, yes, I would say... Um, uh, UFC is my favorite promotion. Uh, I do like to do my research and watch the Pride events, but I would say, yes, UFC is my favorite um, promotion, followed by, I guess, Ryzen, you know, because that's kind of like the remnants of uh, <coughs> of Pride. And then, um, yeah, I like the, the European promotions as well, you know. Um, I just watched Octagon, you know, the other day. And... I'm sorry? I do. This is Czech Republic promotion. David Dvorak came from that promotion. Yeah, David. Yeah, this is correct. And um, I just, there's a, there's a hot prospect, you know, um, Teresa Bleda. Did you, did you watch her? I, I know. I know. Yeah, she's, she's cool, man. Uh, she's a very, uh, reminds me of Ronda Rousey, like in some aspects, you know, her, her nickname is literally Ronda. Uh, so I just think uh, there's a lot of cool stuff, uh, you know, like KSW, you know, uh, Jan Blahovich is from there. A lot of cool, cool shit, in my opinion. In general, so much stuff to be had. I think you're missing out if you just watch the UFC. You know, a lot of feeder promotions like LFA as well. Um, Israel's first KO loss came from um, Alex Perea is, is fighting out of there right now. So, yeah, there's, it's not just the UFC anymore. There's, there's a lot of good stuff. How many events have you visited and how did you feel heading into the event? How did you feel being in the crowd? Is it a different, is it a big difference between watching like on TV and being in the crowd? I've actually had the pleasure of going to an event. I went to UFC uh, 226 in Vegas. Uh, Daniel Cormier and Stipe Miocic won. And that was, uh, that was, I was pretty incredible. And it wasn't just the, uh, it wasn't just like the the run of the mill event. Um, it was like uh, when Cormier was going to fight for the the heavyweight strap, you know, like become a double champ. And I think at the time uh, McGregor had only done that, so I think it was like kind of stupendous. But uh, I think my most memorable point of that experience was uh, not even any of that um, that shit. It was really just meeting Mike Perry in the front, in the front of the, st uh, the fucking uh, steps with my dad, you know? And he's, uh, he's much smaller than, um, you know, most people kind of look at him, you know? In the, in the TV, like you said, like, everyone looks big and, like, muscular and, uh, 
you know, and ferocious. And this guy, I mean, oh yeah, sure, he he's built like a mini Greek god, but like, uh, I mean, he, he, I mean, he's kind of tiny, man. Like he's uh, he's like five nine at at best, and uh, but he's a he's such a nice dude. You know, he took pictures with my boomer dad, and uh, yeah, man, he made the trip very special. I also ran into Chris Weidman and Sterling like at the elevator, you know, on, on the way to the like fucking uh, press conference, the Ultimate Fighter stuff. Very, very nice experience. Vegas is also a treat to just go to visit, you know. Uh, yeah, man, I, I would if, if this if this pandemic ever if we can ever get over this, you know, I strongly um, urge anyone just to uh, go to one event at least, you know. Um, have you ever been to one? Unfortunately, no. In Serbia, MMA has been a taboo topic until like five, six years ago. You know, in Bulgaria, it's even worse, believe me. Before Blago, even we only had Stanislav Netkov and uh, Jordan Radev in the UFC, but it was a taboo topic for a very, very long period of time. And people were watching MMA fans like they were having 12 heads for a very long period of time. So it's kind of different culture, you know. People are very much narrow-minded here when it comes to MMA. It changes in the last two or three years, but right now, believe me, USA is very, very uh, much ahead of uh, my area. I see. Yes, there was also an event um, at UFC Prague. It was Blachowicz versus um, Tiago Santos. Uh, it seemed like a lot of people from every, everywhere in um, Europe kind of came to support their fighters, even Lucia Pudilova. You know, I don't know if uh, you knew people that went to see that card, but uh, yeah, that was kind I of cool. a that was kind of a interesting card. I, I enjoyed that one. That was where Santos even beat Blahovich. And looking back, that was that might be Santos' greatest win of all time. But uh, yeah, cool, man. Yeah, but in general, man, I would say that the uh, yeah. Out of all my events, I've been to maybe thousands of baseball games, you know, but uh, that one UFC event will forever be my greatest uh, experience at a sporting event. Uh, can we discuss uh, fan-friendly fighters according to your thoughts? Who is the fan-friendliest fighter you have ever met? Well, the, the pool is not that big, but I would have to say... Um, either Daniel Cormier, um, uh, Mike Perry again, or, well, maybe even Ariel Hawani. You know, I know he's not even a journalist. He's not, I know, it's hilarious, right? I mean, he's not even a fighter, but Joker. he did take a picture. I'm sorry? Are you joking? <laughs> well, he did take a picture with me, you know, like um, at the press conference. So that is uh, kind of cool. And yeah, I just, uh, I didn't want to become a journalist early on in my, I guess, uh, college career. So I did look up to the John Morgans, the, uh, the Ariel Fawanis, and uh, yeah, dude, I admire his success. And, uh, you know, it is kind of funny as <laughs> that they both have the, the same career or the, the same show now so it's kind of uh yeah they, they seem like they're likable people pe uh, pleasers and they they have been known to take pictures with people before so yeah i admire them i don't really have any animosity to them and it is cool that uh, cormier does train in san jose which i i you know reside in so yeah i would i respect both of them that is outstanding uh can you see me Oh, I can see you yes okay i'm gonna show you my fan friend list fighter give me like 30 seconds please Oh, no problem. I guess you know who this guy is. I'm... Is that, um... Is that Yoel Romero and... No. So, oh, I can't... Dude, I can't... I don't know who that is. It's Brazilian guy. He fought Dimitrius Johnson. Oh, I know who that... Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, um... Fuck. Dude, I don't... Um... Oh, um, shit. Dude, you got... No, wait. Hold on, hold on. Shit. Um... Dude, I'm a clown. I know who... He beat, um... Ben Nguyen. You right? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Ah, shit. I don't know... I don't know, like, if he's with the UFC anymore, man. Like, what's his fucking name? He is not with the UFC anymore. It's Wilson Hayes. Just to get uh, this photo. Hold on. Yeah, yeah, he fought for the title. 
Yeah, on the on that one card. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I yeah. actually he had three interviews with that guy, and he was my first uh, big interview alongside Gil- Gilbert Burns. But uh, I have to say that uh, he helped me with some things. Uh, even even my parents wouldn't help me with such things. I was like, what <laughs> the heck? That's awesome, man. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, he had a great physique. Yeah, yeah, cool guy, cool guy. And he's a very he's a very good person, you know. I was kind of very surprised. I was like, wait, I mean, I mean, I'm I'm just you know, I'm just the guy who was at the beginning of, of the career. And Wilson was just, oh, no problem. We are we are gonna talk. We are gonna talk. You know, he he didn't make a difference. I was like, uh, he he's a superstar, and I'm like, and he didn't care. You know, he doesn't care whether you're a superstar, whether you're a regular person. He doesn't care. He he makes no difference. Yeah, that's sick, man. But what is he up to now, man? I'm curious. Like... He fought in some uh, Mexican promotion, defeated the guy via arm triangle choke. And he was on the way to ink uh, Ares FC contract, but uh, COVID, uh, COVID oh, okay. struck. And uh, he was unable to fly to Africa. He was unable to fly to Europe. And he was like, listen, I'm going to fight wherever they offer. They offered something in, Mex- in Mexico. He won. And now I don't know what's happening at the moment, <laughs> you know. I don't know right now. Dude, I mean, the the after Demetrius is, like, gone, dude, the flyaways are so different now. I mean, you know, Tim Elliott just won. He could probably annihilate Tim Elliott, in my opinion. So, yeah, dude, this is this is facts. I like that. Yeah, he can come back for sure. There's a lot of um, flyweights like him and um, Shorty Torres and Will Brooks that could come back, in my opinion. You know, so there's the landscape is different. I mean, that one guy, the fucking... That there are there are bantam weights ranked that um that at flyweight you know we need to get some the ba- flyweights back. In my we opinion. definitely need and uh, according to me Wilson is left-handed plus he's a master of BJJ but he didn't have a huge fan base I don't know why I mean uh, I was thinking that more friendly people get more fans but it seems uh, it's not going <laughs> that way I don't know. Yeah, man, you gotta talk some smack, apparently, it's, and, or or gen, or fake uh, shit talk like uh, Colby Covington to get uh, the ticket sales, at least IG followers, you know what have you. Yeah, modesty doesn't pay. I was even looking back to the. I'm sorry. I was looking back to the the Tito Ortiz and Chuck Liddell feud. Were you a fan at those times? <laughs> That's awesome. Um, and even back then, they knew that the, the pay model um, was uh, to, to basically run your mouth. And, uh, you know, it was like a, like a soap opera, you know, a WWE storyline. And that's what would sell the tickets. You know, it wasn't the humility factor. And that, that, would, that would come later, I guess. Absolutely. I definitely agree with that. And on the other side, Wilson is dedicated to hard work, to training sessions, you know, Pushing forward, pushing forward, no surrender, no retreat. And uh, actually, I kind of started copycatting him in real life. And uh, everything got cool. better. Everything got better. You know, I got more subs, more followers. I wanted to ask you, how in the first place did you... I mean, how did you find my channel? And what in general were you thinking when you the first time saw my channel? Well, man, I think you're... Man, it's so hard remembering... Um... One of one of the greats, I guess, on uh, prediction MMA YouTube. But um, yeah, you just you and one of um, some of the other names that um, I follow for legitimate um, MMA like predicting and um, you know uh, betting advice. Um, I mean, you you just float to the top, my man. You know, and uh, and it's just um, I don't know if it's an algorithm thing, but it's just a uh, People just um, like say your name, and and that's just I think that's a sign of brand recognition. That's a sign of uh, uh, fan loyalty, and I think that's what happens when you know a smart guy that uh, has done his job, um, you know, burning his uh, you know his loyalty or his his or I guess his fans have done a good job just being loyal over the years has translated, you know, all the hard work has really, like, uh, shined through. So, yeah. 
But the truth is, I started working very seriously since June last year because uh, I was experimenting, you know, and uh, after that COVID, I kind of had a deal with my boss to kick off with boxing too. And I was thinking like, is it going to work? Is it not going to work? But it actually works, you know, people recognize me in the USA, in Canada, in UK. And to me, it's a great symbol of confession because if people recognize you here where I live, it doesn't care much, you know, you can be the best here, but people, for example, I'm going to give you one, one, uh, something that happened to me, but I was laughing, but somebody would have been slammed by that. For example, you have uh, guys who intentionally tell to local fighters not to take interviews with you, you know, and people yeah. were, were trying to evade me. I was saying, okay, you don't have to go for interview. I don't give a fuck. I mean, uh, I have international <laughs> names. I, I, I really said that in one show. I don't give a fuck. I have international names. Why do I need you? And then everybody who didn't want to do interview with me, they started sending me messages. I was like, uh, wait, you said you don't want to. No, no, no. We respect you. You had the Burns. You had Hayes. You had like Mina. You had like numerous names. Immediately they started following my channel. Immediately they show respect. And I was like, okay, but <laughs> I mean, was was this really necessary? Oh, do you know what, dude? I'm going to tell you a story. Oh. There was a, there was a, after you didn't, you were uh, gracious enough to do an interview with me on my channel. There was a hater out there that was like messaging, I think, uh, this little kid. And I, I think maybe even you It was like, don't do an interview with this fucking, I think he's, he's lying. But like, he, he's such a, like a kind of a piece of shit, right? He's like, don't do an interview with, he's just like one of my haters, right? He's like, don't do an interview with this kid. He's like a Nazi, blah, blah, blah. And then sure enough, I did like the Gabe Green interview right afterwards. And then that that guy was so butthurt that he had to pay like $50 to, to interview Charles Felony Bennett. And he was doing like, a, like, a, like basically like crack or whatever on his interview. And like, it was just so pathetic. It's like, this guy is like unemployed. He has like nothing going on in his life. But the point is we like, yeah, it's just like, we just like succeed and keep doing our thing and stuff. And just like, these people like are so like, uh, soulless and just like, they have a black hole in their lives that they, they just want to see other people like just, uh, falter and they're willing to even like tell other fighters to not get interviewed by us or you or me or it's just that's just so weird you know like i just don't understand that that's kind of uh like pathetic you know in my opinion well here this is normal because in my country there is only triangle tv he's uh, like serbian best journalist and that's why i chose this flag you see that's why i chose this flag that was one of the reasons. And another reason, because I'm paid to promote Bulgaria. But uh, I chose Bulgarian flag because I'm half, half, half Serbian, half Bulgarian. But I chose that flag because in Bulgaria, people don't care much, you know. And here, if you're not Triangle TV, everybody hates you. You know, they think you're not available. I said, okay, why would I be? I'm going to be the Bulgarian cowboy. Who cares? I mean, Bulgarian cowboy was given to me by a fan, by the US fan, I told you last time. But that's why I picked yeah. uh, the different side, you know. I didn't want it to be... I didn't want you to promote the state uh, who doesn't like me. I mean, makes no sense to me, right? Definitely not. Yeah. No, oh. no, no, this is... Yeah. Oh, yeah, I, I mean, I concur. Yeah, 100%. I just don't... Um, I mean, like, for journalism, uh, journalists anywhere, no matter what your, your creed or your nationality is, I just... Uh, when, um, when you have, like, unemployed uh, bums, just... Uh, trying to like make it their uh, their life's mission because i guess before that they had no purpose in their existence just to kind of uh try to take your quote unquote work away from you it's just kind of uh kind of like pathetic i guess that's where i'm i was going with that but yeah that was it i actually think about you that you're pretty much uh, doing a great job when it comes to mma knowledge and such things i mean okay if you're still in college i understand why don't you why don't you enter the why don't you enter the full-time MMA throttle and on the other side uh, I did I didn't want I don't want to work for companies because uh, somebody who knows nothing about MMA will come and he will teach me how to do my job and uh, I simply cannot <laughs> accept that I have UFC on fight pass 
I have the SDN. I pay for everything, man. I mean, why would I tolerate some dumbass who knows nothing on that? Exactly, some dumbass that knows nothing. I mean, uh, yeah, like they they've never trained a day in their life. They they're gonna they're gonna suddenly um, uh, they're gonna uh, corporate explain you like um, uh, uh, decision judge decisions. Um, you know, but um. As, as you know, in, um, a slightly older gentleman like yourself that's been around the ringer, what would you advise someone out of college, you know, getting into the fray, if you will, you know, independent or not, you know, for this uh, this MMA uh, journey, you know, wow. hypothetically, allegedly. I would pick like, you know, James Lynch is on the top of my MMA journalists and he is very respectful and... Uh, I would uh, pick uh, also John Hyun Kuo, Ryan Jarrell. I was talking about that in an interview. But uh, I'd uh, advise first, you must have another job. Unfortunately, in the beginning, until you become a rock star, you must have another job. So yeah. I don't say yeah. this is uh, this is wrong or bad or maybe correct. But you must have another source of income. That's number one. Number two. You know, it's very, very hard to reach uh, people. And uh, do not focus on UFC only. Do not focus on UFC only. You can love UFC. That's good. But do not focus on UFC only unless you're, for example, MMA guru or the MMA host. Or, you know what am I talking about, right? I know what I'm talking about, yes. And, this is true. Yeah. And the greatest mistake people made, they start fishing for the big names early on. I mean, okay, Justin Jr., is a special character. He was able to do so. I don't know how, but he's one in million who succeeded. <laughs> no, really. Yeah. No, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's uh, well, he's 13 years old, and um, that is. Uh, I'm not even hating on him. I mean, we talk to him on the regular, and um, it's just dude, his charm and his. Uh, I don't think anyone wants to honestly reject a 13 year old kid, man. Like but with. I'm in very good relations uh, relations with him. He's very, I mean, he respects me. So whatever he does, not my problem as long as he respects me. Yeah, dude, no, he's great, man. For, at the interviews, 100%. And uh, all power to him. And his interviews are, are pretty great. Like, um, this is true. This is all, this is all facts. Yeah, but yeah, the the, in, the income thing, I think you nailed it on the head. I think everyone tries to throw all their eggs in one basket. And uh, yeah, that's just not sustainable. But I know this because I live, you know, within my means and I already have this job. So it's just like, yeah, you're, you're preaching to the choir. Yeah, I'm not a high school kid. Like, I, I understand what you mean. And, uh, there is another very, very big problem. I'm going to tell you about this. It doesn't depend if you live in the USA. But if you live uh, in uh, my part of the world, there is another big problem. I'm not a native speaker. And when you're not a native speaker, you have 90% of chances that you're going to get rejected because of your language. So you must nail on everything. For example, I was getting messages from various outlets. And uh, I say, okay, who is my editor? And they say, listen, this I say, listen. I know more than this. I mean, I, I speak to him and I see he knows nothing. I say, listen, either I do the way I want, either you you hire somebody else. I mean, why would I why would I tolerate such things? I know more than him. It makes no sense. And they're like, no, 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 your grammar, this, your this, your this, your this. And in the end, uh, they will pay you like 100 bucks per month. And I, uh, and I was like, okay, pay some, some fool like 100 bucks. I don't need that in my life, really. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, no, really. I, I was uh, getting that kind uh, of offers many times. Even for a local MMA, for a local MMA magazine, they asked me, I said, okay, how much do you pay? They said, listen, we this, we this. And an editor who came, uh, we were having an argument and the guy didn't know the difference between, uh, I mean, you're going to laugh your ass off, but the guy didn't know the difference between arm bar and omoplata. <laughs> no really yeah yeah i get it i mean uh the, the, i mean, how old was that um editor uh, editor was uh, 27 years old and i'm 33 and i asked him listen have you i mean yeah. uh, okay i don't care whether you fought or not but you don't know the difference between our bar and omoplata and you are going to lecture me how i should write i mean makes no sense to me then we started talking and he said no 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 no, no. he doesn't know the difference between hook and overhand 
he doesn't know the difference between a liver kick and a spleen kick. And I was like, okay, man, listen, we got nothing to discuss. And they were calling me and begging me. I said, no, 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 no. I can't cooperate such person. For example, he will say something that is not accurate and I will have to fix something that is accurate. It makes no sense to me. Plus, I said, uh, uh, that's not going to work. Plus, uh, my salary is uh, my salary has to be bigger than his because he knows nothing. <laughs> That's yeah, cool. just hit him with the bigger salary at the end. Um, yeah, but so this was at an MMA uh, magazine, and the and the editor in chief, I guess, had, doesn't watch MMA. Yes, that's true. For example, I I told you I worked for Middle Easy, but that editor knows nothing, and then she lectures me what happened, and she doesn't watch it. She doesn't watch fights. And then when I when I told her everything. She was very brave via keyboard. When I told her, "Okay, let let us uh, settle this, let this," she just uh, she just said, "Oh no, I didn't mean to do so." And then I said, "Okay, either we are going to settle this face to face, either find another writer." Damn. Yeah, I mean, in the end, you you will have to deal with with such people. So, uh, my my advice: be ready for that. I don't say it's good or bad. Maybe you are not going to have to deal with such people, but. If you know a lot about MMA, you will have a problem. I mean, I'm not disrespecting I, you. I think you know a lot about MMA, but I'm telling you that you might have to to deal such uh, such issues. Well, I I could always learn more, especially on the ground, you know. Um, I um, but yeah, I mean, I understand that. I mean, I used to I used to write for some uh, gaming websites and stuff, but uh, yeah, the the MMA sphere is always uh. Yeah, I have never, I've never done such shit. And uh, but yeah, if they're getting you on not grammatical stuff and just on the sport, then that's a problem, you know. And uh, yeah, that's that's too bad, man. But I guess let's see. So during the last card, man, what was your favorite uh, performance? I guess I, I noticed that it was a little bit too on the top. It wasn't as exciting as the preliminary card. Would you would you not agree? Well, actually, I do agree, man. I really listen. Uh, preliminary card was like hype nine out of ten for me. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, I was pretty hyped, man. Yeah, I was like, I was in your chat even a little bit, I like, think. and I was like, and, and I was like, wow, dude, I couldn't believe even Trevin fucking Jones got a knockout. I was like, oh my god. I mean, well, I could believe it. A lot of people were betting it, but I was like, oh man, Trevin Jones got a knockout. This this might even be the start of like something crazy like and then yeah sure enough even kai car france got like a walk away mark hunt knockout you know basically and i was like that was my favorite knockout honestly and then everything else was just oh the kennedy knockout or that, that was that my fight. favorite one this short right by kennedy Nazachuku. very nice very nice Am yes amanda limos with the uh, good good performance you know I always thought um, Souza had like kind of a bum chin, or she, her, she's kind of chinny, and Limos is just an excellent striker. So yeah, that, that was a recipe for disaster. And um, uh, yeah, Benavidez washed up. Dominic Cruz is the greatest of all time. You know, I thought that was a, a unanimous decision, but split decision. Okay, whatever, man. I guess you're gonna give half a round to fucking <laughs> Casey Kenny. And, um, yeah, what else did you like, I guess? I'm talking about the preliminary card. But, well, uh, I offered in my... I'm just reading you now my community, my community post. I offered uh, which was uh, the most original finishing move. From preliminary card, I offered three three things. Urosh Medic's barrage of ground or, and uh, pound bullets. Nazechuk was short right hook. Or uh, Lemos uh, jab of fury. And the mostly people picked uh, Urosh Medic. Yeah, yeah, that was was good. I just don't think it one was like as insane as the other ones, just because like, dude, I thought the other guy sucks so bad. Like, you know, like I, he was just like already. I think his chin is awful, to be honest. You know, but Medic is 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 a is a, a problem, I guess. He will, he will be good, sure. Um, um, fuck, where's it going with that? Yeah, everyone was good. I think I voted in that one um, on on Limos just because, dude, you don't see. Limos. So you were the yeah. only guy who voted on Limos. I think I might have been on Limos. Yeah, dude, yeah. just first of all, I, I can't believe there's no one that voted. And then on top of it, 
You don't see 115 pounders, man, fucking knocking out girls like that. Yeah, yeah, it was so. a really drop of fury, man. It was a really drop of fury for me. She finished your ground pound, but man, this was a drop of fury. Kind of Kamaru Usman copycat drop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's crazy. And um, I, I talked to, uh, you know, Sam uh, Sorord Bet or whatever? That guy. Oh, Sam? Like, Sam? You know who I'm talking about? Uh, uh, S-R-O-D-R, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was my guest. I don't know. He was my guest. Yeah, he's a really nice guy. Um, and he, um, we were talking about um, like the bets or whatever of the card, and he, I think he bet that by KO, like Limos by KO. And um, he's like very, um, yeah. And I was like, shit, I should have bet that because Limos is fucking like, like really good striker, you know. But against in a way, like she, she won, but it wasn't like. Like that good, but I don't know, man. Like, Limos is good. I, I I'm very impressed, I guess. But uh, yeah, the main card though, I felt Rakic and um, Santos like underperformed, you know, because they both said they were going to, like, like not steal the show, but they're like they need a groundbreaking performance to both get to the title, and uh, I felt like they didn't bo- go for it until the third round. Like Santos wobbled Rakic with a body kick and Rakic, I don't know. What did you think about the, the that fight? Actually, <clears throat> uh, Rakic's game plan was to wait for Thiago Moreta Santos. He knew that he'd lose if he takes part in an open brawl with uh, Moreta, as well as you know. So his corner man told him yeah. not to attack Moreta. I know that because he trained at American top team Zagreb, which is Croatia, the country next to Serbia, you know. And he trained there, and they told him, listen, <clears throat> you have two options. Either you're going to brawl Moretta and get knocked out. Either you're going to wait for Moretta and win the fight. You choose. Interesting. I noticed um, in the first round, he almost caught Santos with the, with the, with the right hand um, faked into the head kick that he caught Jimmy Manoa with. You yeah, know? but Moretta did this as well as you've seen. Yeah, yeah, I was like, shit, that would have been that would have been the cool like highlight. But um, yeah, yeah, it, it was it was tentative. I'm not gonna say it's boring or anything. I was just like, I was like, wow, this is a patient fight. But uh, yeah, and uh, Islam dominance. I think he got like a reverse arm triangle, which was like insane. Yeah, something. it was kind of modified arm triangle, but I don't know which one it was. Yeah, that was crazy. Some people were picking Drew Dober. I'm like, you guys are idiots. <laughs> like, no, I didn't like, pick Drew, Drew Dober. I knew he had no chance unless he keeps the fight standing. Yeah, but it's... Yeah, no, I mean, like, after the first... We, we were all watching it backstage. We were like, dude, the first takedown, like, it's over. Like, immediate. I, I just don't think, like, the... It's not even to say Drew Dober is bad. It's just, like, I don't think, like, anyone really at that, like, top 10 level um or whatever has the grappling cardio you know after like a, a takedown like if, if he could beat saruki in a grappling i don't think he can you know a drew dober or nasrat is gonna have the grappling cardio but that's just my opinion makes sense uh, to yeah. me and about the next fight you know this was the unluckiest move on the whole card i picked Petr Jan. i gave first two rounds to aljo third round to Jan. fourth round was going in the favor of Jan. And then he made that kind of a mistake. And uh, is Aljo an actor? I don't know, man. It was an illegal knee. People can say whatever they want. But the knee was illegal. The knee was illegal. And I actually disagree with uh, giving Aljo the first round. I know he had some, I guess, the most success in the fight. But, uh, I mean, he did get dropped. And he did get spiked on his head. And I thought he was, like, that was bad, man. Like that that spiking on his head. But I guess if you have to give a round to, to Aljo, you give him the first round. But Jan is a monster. You know, and this is such a sh- stupid fucking ridiculous thing that to knee him in the head. Yeah, it is illegal. At the end of the day, we're getting uh, ahead of ourselves as a as a as a fan base. It's like he might milked it, but yeah, it's just it was illegal and yeah. Damn it, Jan. What are you? What are your thoughts on Aljamain potentially <laughs> fighting a Cejudo for the belt and uh, ducking Jan? You know, I don't think he's gonna duck Jan again. No, I don't think so. Okay, yeah, fair enough. All right, uh, moving on. 
Nunez and Megan. What what was? The I deal know it there? was a mismatch. You've probably seen uh, my uh, video, my latest video of top three Amanda Nunez threats. And uh, believe it or not, I picked well. I picked uh, Jermaine and I picked Panikians. And then people are, are laughing. Why? I mean, come on, Panikians at first. It's very hard to knock her out. That's number one. Number two, her BGG is outstanding. Number three, her nickname is Banzai, and her greatest uh, her greatest advantage is cardio. So he, she can at least uh, give Amanda Nunez a hard time. Dude, I didn't actually think about pa Penny. We were we were also talking about. Dude, that's actually a great pick because uh, Aspen Lad has been like killed, you know, in thirty seconds, and like yeah, that's. Penny Kianza, yeah, and she beat uh, Eubanks. Yeah, that's actually not a not a terrible. Yeah, at this point, man. Yeah, there's like there's no one. So like this is this is good. Okay, Penny so, Kianza. Yeah, Penny Kianza, and uh, also Jermaine Durandam is better striker than Amanda, but she doesn't know to grapple. Well, is counter striker. I mean, I'm left-handed. I also come from Taekwondo. I'm not coming from Muay Thai. I'm kick. I'm Taekwondo kickboxer, but I know how Muay Thai fighters counter. Because my yeah. brother trained Mao Tai. And when we were sparring, I learned those spear elbows, horizontal elbows, but every time in the clinch, he was pissing me apart. Okay, okay. So is Penny uh, a southpaw? Uh, no, Penny is actually right handed, but uh, she is uh, uh, Valentina Shevchenko is southpaw. But uh, there is a problem uh, with Pani Kianza. When you go for a Vivian overhand right, which is Amanda Nunez's special strike, Pani Kianza always does this. But have you seen other strikers? Megan did like this to cover up. That's not only this or like this. That's the only way to evade Vivian overhand. That's number one. And Pani Kianza always does this. She covers up like this. So there's no way Vivian overhand right is going to rock her. Okay. Well, Megan fought like a uh, terrified uh, gazelle. I, I don't think that was a... Uh... A good performance at all. Like, I think that was a complete... Come on, uh, the girl has only Vivian overhand right. Don't you know to go for a push kick? Don't you know to cover up? I, I mean, I don't know what happened to Megan. Yeah, deer in the headlights for sure. Um, this is coming from, like, uh, a, a guy that trained at Glory with with her, basically. Uh, but, yeah, you know, it is what it is. Um, also moving on, the main event... Um, yeah, great performance. Uh, I'm just happy personally because uh, I bet over two and a half on it. But, uh, you know, uh, Jan winning by decision, uh, kind of a small upset. But, I mean, you know, looking back, was it really, like, that big of an upset? You know, it was just the bigger 205er and then uh, Israel weighing in at 200 pounds. It was just, I don't know, Polish power. What are your thoughts? Well, I think uh, in my state we like to say that uh, – Jan Blachowicz out chest Israel Adesanya, if you know what that means. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, he just, uh, yeah. just big boy, mega-minded him. Yeah. Mega-minded, yeah. Uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, he even outstruck him in, like, many rounds that I was, I was seeing. Like, the punches hit harder, and uh, I think... I mean, there was, like, one round that I saw Israel... Um, Kind of like putting work on him but then yeah dude jan just like got in deep and he sunk in the takedowns and that's all she wrote i enjoyed it cool, i mean man. i enjoyed just yeah looking forward to this next card though is there anything that tickles your fancy well for this card my safest pick is angela hill other than that all my picks are very unsafe let's be honest very very unsafe and people are saying, listen, Leon Edwards is going to pick Belal Muhammad apart. Wait, man, slow down a little, please. I I can, I can think that fight heads into the championship rounds. Interesting. Yeah, I, I know for a fact I'm just going to bet over two and a half on that. You know, I think uh, Belal is like a warrior. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> is there a bet uh, in the USA? Can you bet uh, uh, the fight goes into championship rounds? Oh, like the bet is literally just goes into the championship rounds, like fourth and fifth? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I don't know about that, man. I think it's literally just over two and a half or over three and a half. Okay, and over two and a half then. Yeah. I, yeah. Because, dude, Bilal, I, I'm, I'm kind of like on that, on that side that Bilal hasn't like fully recovered 
And not even just fully recovered, but he hasn't, like, adapted to, you know, the Diego Lima leg kicks? Yes, I know, man. Diego Lima has powerful leg kicks. Very good. But um, who's to say that um, Leon doesn't, like, utilize the same game plan and just kind of, like, but, but in a better way? I mean, he does the same thing, though, you know? But in a higher championship level. I mean, you can disagree with me, though. I'm, 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 I'm willing to accept um, any opinions, you know? No, no problem. It makes sense to me. But Leon was, he hasn't fought for some uh, period of time. And uh, it's dangerous to make comparison now. You know, people change in like two or three years. You know that people change. Uh, are you saying for the worse? Or... You can change for, for the worse or you can change for the better. It depends on you, right? Oh, sure. I, but do you not think that um, um, Bilal's leg is not, like, a little bit compromised, though? It has been, like, uh, only, like, less than a month. Well, it can be compromised. You never know. It can be compromised. But uh, Bilal could try to drag this fight to the ground. On the other side, Leon Edwards is pretty much known for uh, devastating uh, takedown defense. So it's not going to be an easy match for Bilal. Oh, yeah, no, it's going to be the... He's going to have to dig in really deep. Um, and, I, and I'm and i not even... Like, some people are saying, oh, the, the fucking... The Diego Lima fight was a... Oh, a gimme fight. I think Diego Lima is underrated at this point, you know? I think he's, uh, he's very... He has evolved, but this... Yeah, this fight is, is very interesting. It's, it's going to be a great fight. Um... Other fights on this card that I'm I'm looking into um, are Ben Rothwell and Felipe Linz. I think it's very interesting that uh, Felipe Linz comes to the UFC and he has lost every single fight. You know, after winning a million dollars, steroids maybe, maybe Thank not. You. Yeah, yeah. And um, other other good ones. Um, I believe JJ Aldridge beats uh, Courtney Casey. Makes sense. Uh, uh, but other other than that, you know, like it is kind of like a like a fart uh, in the pan kind of card. But uh, yeah, uh, do you got any other thoughts or or well, is that basically? Yeah, yeah. Many people disagree with Rani Yahya being a confident pick, and uh, I I kind of agree. I kind of agree with that. So. Oh. So I I definitely definitely agree with that. And, uh, yeah, yeah, I definitely but, agree. Yeah, go ahead. No, I would say Rani Yaya is, like, a semi-confident pick, but have you seen Ray Rodriguez's, like, record? It's just awful, man. I mean, not even just his record, but, like, the opponents of competition that he fights is, is awful. Would you say that Rani Yaya's, like, chin is bad? Is that why it's, like, a, it's like kind of, like, a, not a good pick? I'm just, I'm curious. I would pick Yaya to win, but uh, uh, I would pick Yaya to win, but like sixty percent, man. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Would you say that fight? I know you do a lot of those picks. It ends with uh, not even sometimes even the pick. It would just be like the goes the distance or not. Would you say that fight maybe goes the distance, or is that maybe a prediction for a later time? If it goes the distance, actually... there is a big probability that Yaya is going to lose. So. Oh, man, I don't know if it goes the distance. Yaya has never been good uh, when uh, going uh, the distance, so... Oof. That's a Did trick. he not? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he did go the distance against Simone, right? Yes. Well, I mean, I don't see Ray Rodriguez finishing him if Simone could not finish him, you know? I mean, Yaya is tough. I mean, correct. Like, who has he been finished by? Ricky Simon was unable to finish him, I think. Yeah. I mean, I value some Simon way lo way more than this fucking guy, in my opinion. Either it's going to be it... Yaya's submission, either it's going to be the other guy via decision. Yaya has to finish via submission. Yeah. I mean, do you think Ray Rodriguez has the know-it-all, know-how to um, survive to the decision? Because that's actually plus money, I've looked. Hardly. <laughs> hardly. <laughs> hardly, maybe, but hardly. I mean, if Yaya drags him to the ground, that's the end of the road. 
Yeah, I mean, he got submitted by a 30-second uh, guillotine from Brian Kelleher, which is uh, hilarious. But that is uh, Brian Kelleher's move, you know? He did get Odie Osborne with the guillotine as well. Actually, when I had the interview with Odey Osborne, I knew Brian Kelleher had a good guillotine, but Odey Osborne had said that he was not uh, there in that fight. And he said, I wasn't walking like a zombie, I was overhyped, and it, this was my problem. So it makes sense to me. Okay, so you're saying maybe don't put that much stock into that, maybe? maybe. If you're if you're looking forward. Okay. Well actually that that helps. Moving on. <laughs> yeah, and about right. other card, you know, Charles Jordan versus Marcel Rojo. I would stay away from that fight, man. Because Charles Jordan is so unpredictable. He can knock out the best guy, he can lose to the worst guy. Yeah. I uh, do you know have you heard of um MMA prediction guru? I know who he is, but I don't watch him every single time because I don't have uh, enough time. But I know the guy. He's okay. He's very, very valuable. Yeah, yeah he's cool. Um, he, he says, I think he's going to put like the his, uh, his mortgage on um, Rojo. <laughs> I don't know why. Oh, like, no, why no, he... no, no, no. Listen, I picked Jordan, but I'm cautious, man. I'm very cautious because uh, you never know with Jordan which way is it going to go. And Rojo is a hungry kid, believe me. No, I mean, nothing wrong with, like, the pick, but I just don't know why to target that fight, like you just said, you know? It's, like, so dangerous, you know? It's, like, a, like a scary fight if I was betting on it. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, interesting. Uh, it, I think it's one of those fights you look with the uh, popcorn and, you know, enjoy it. It's one yeah. of those. Makes sense to me. Really much uh, of a hard uh, fight uh, to watch. Really much. And about the other fights, I really don't know is there any other fight that really draws my attention. What do you think? I mean, I mean, Jesus Christ, man. This card is just kind of like a shitty card. Um, it's not that bad, honestly. I think the undercard again is like very interest intriguing. I will look at it right now really quick. Uh, Martinez and Grant... That fight should be hilarious because Martinez is kind of like, it's almost a mismatch in my opinion. Martinez should Maybe. annihilate Grant. Well, I know, but um, people are saying because Grant is uh, very durable, um, but that's all he has in my opinion because uh, he, he, he got a miracle comeback from behind win over Martin Day, uh, Davy Grant, but Jonathan Martinez in my opinion should be on a five-fight winning streak. And he has beaten Frankie, the Frankie Sciences of the world. He has beaten uh, the Thomas Almeidas of the world. And I think those are all levels above Davy Grant. So this is an interesting fight for Jonathan Martinez to see if he can style on an opponent like Davy Grant. But I understand, you know, you got to you gotta be uh, have humility. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, I guess I'm excited for Jonathan Martinez because uh, I think this is like a young prospect bantamweight i know he's not that young but i mean you know and he is uh i guess latino or whatever so that is a good fight gloria de paula versus Ginu frey who do you got in that one that's hard man very hard but i think i'm gonna sleep uh, with de paula in that fight <laughs> okay for sure also um, wheat versus semelsberger everybody's sleeping on wheat i picked semelsberger to win that fight yeah everyone's sleeping on wheat yeah, I agree. What about Eric Anders Stewart? Oh, man, I interviewed both of those guys. I love both of them, man. That's a hard pick for me. I have oh, to yeah. go with over 1.5, man. Listen, uh, I can't pick against these guys because they are, they are very friendly, you know. And especially they are fighting each other and they are kind of similar fighting styles. So it, to me, it's like really a coin flip, so I would have to go with over 1.5. I don't know who's going to win that one. That's a sexy bet, man, over 1.5 on that. I love my overs, man, like so much. So, yeah, that's a great one. And, uh, yeah, Eric Anders is tough as fuck. I love Eric Anders, like, as a, as a person, you know? Like, he's a great guy. Uh, one of the few I used to follow uh, on social media. Yeah, he's a great dude. But, uh and he might be able to grind out Darren Stewart. He just might. But I don't know. <laughs> you know? Like, I just don't know. 
England is under a lockdown, man. So Darren Stewart is facing massive, massive problems because uh, he has to train in modified circuit, in a modified surround. So I don't know, man. It's gonna be hard fight for Darren. Not because he is uh, he is worse fighter. He is not worse fighter, but he is having a hard time in England due to a lockdown. Oh yeah, you you got that right. All right, this is a this is actually like a pivotal fight just for everyone's or oh, actually okay, how about these two fights how about these three fights um cape and nicolau who do you cape. got or uh, uh, as yeah. the portuguese say cape yeah cape. yeah <laughs> yeah whatever cape. yeah yeah Manel, cape. Cape. you got him by like ko probably stoppage unless nicolau drags him to the ground but uh, this guy has very good takedown defense i watched him at rising and you probably watched him at rising I did, Roger. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What did you think of his last performance? I'm just curious. Like, what was what's the deal, man? I don't know, man. I just think he put on a show. I mean, that's just Manel Cape, right? Yeah, yeah. He's put on. He, he, exactly. That is a rising Cape for you. You know. Yeah. Putting on shows. Well, if um, he if he switches to rising mode, I think he could be unbeatable at uh, at this uh, weight class. Until he reach, uh, until he reaches like top five contender status. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Nicolau has also been off of a layoff, right? Yes. Like I think it's been two years. Yeah, yeah, I think that I think that factors in a little bit. What about Dan Ige and Gavin Tucker? I picked Tucker in that fight, but people are criticizing me. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you get roasted if you get picked Gavin Tucker. Gavin Tucker is slept on, you know? He's kind of almost uh, uh, approaching dark horse territory, you know, in the featherweight di division. Yeah. Very, very strong built little guy. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, I think uh, it speaks for itself. Um, yeah, we, we will see. Uh, do you have any um, betting advice for that? Do you, do you say, like, he wins by, like, maybe over... Well, obviously, I think that's like over one and a half, right? But like, maybe yeah. it goes. To yeah. Yeah, yeah, over one. Interesting, interesting. And uh, I guess we'll leave it off to the people's main event: uh, Misha Serkinov and Ryan Spann. I have Misha, but like, oh. dude, I don't know, man. He Misha has like a weird chin, you know. He has weak chin and the best chokes in the division. So if you mix these two up, either you get the submission victory, either you get the knockout loss. Yeah, so inside the distance. <laughs> inside the distance, yeah. So inside the distance, I also picked Misha, but my backup pick is uh, the fight will not go the distance. Interesting, man. Well, man, this has been stupendous. Uh, such a fun interview, man. You are such an easygoing interviewer, and uh, yeah, we need to do this again sometime. Yeah, why not? I mean, you can invite me whenever you have time. I mean, I know you're a busy guy. You're, I know college is hard, man. I've been in college. At least in my state, <laughs> college is hard. Oh, yeah, man. It's hard everywhere, especially when uh, there's no campus to commute to and it's all online. So, yeah. I know, I know, man. <laughs> yeah. But anyways, man, thank you so much for having me on your channel, man. And um, good luck on all uh, your picks. And, uh, yeah, man, let's... Uh... Yeah, no problem. Thank you. I will start uh, putting video now to creation. I'll probably go training now. I have another interview later. So, okay, I'll put it to creation when it's on. I'm going to publish it. All right, man. Thank you so much. Right. Appreciate it. Thank you. Have a great day. Yeah, man, you too. All right.